So this is actually built up for sure. In the 19, 1946, just one year after the Japanese, Japanese, Japanese the, the liberation from the Japanese occupation. So this area is a quite a remote, you know, place. How close are we to Seoul? It's a two hours. The 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 distance is from the here from here to the Seoul. So it's very you know, close to the actually the Korean capital. Over there is North Korea. You know, look at that the mountain area. That one is at the military border. And over there we can see that the DMZ and some kind of checkpoint. You know, so this one is very close to the actual borderline, south and north. So actually, symbolization of the such a military confliction, but it seems very peaceful. And there are lots of you know animals and, uh, over there, in natural preservation. Mm -hmm. You can see that the wild animal and uh, the vegetation is very rare. So these are actually uh, scars of the uh, the war, the the tank yeah. treads that broke these steps going yeah, up. Exactly. The, the, actually the, this was a tank that yeah, came, tank up, uh, came up. Came up. On the caterpillar. The broken. This area is created by history, but uh, now we can see that. And uh, no history. Yeah. So, um, one day you, this area is occupied by North Korea, so it belongs to North Korean territory for a while. And uh, after the Korean War, actually, they wanted to restore. So normally, actually, people call this area the restored land, or something like that. The restored so, land. The restored land. So that's why I think that this one is a stamp for such kind of you know de desire or demand toward the reunification or restoring the land you know, from the actual the North Korean occupation, the communist occupation, something like that. North Korea hiding or something, artillery and some kind of military camp in those in the mountains. So the mountain I think is watching us. The top of mountain, you can see that North Korean camp. Uh, is a perpetual flower of the so perpetual like perpetual peace. Keep talking. Ah. Oh. Well, it's interesting that this would be uh, <coughs> made to symbolize the uh, the Korean people but also as a symbol of unity of the Korean people, too. It says that uh, Mung Wa produces large, beautiful flowers for 100 days from early summer to late fall. It renews itself daily because a blossom opens early each morning and then falls into the evening to replace by a new blossom early in the next month. But we were just talking that it uh, must have been chosen in a very contemporary nationalistic moment. But still, this place is so uncanny because it just seems to be 
on the other side of the border, but still a memorial or a counter memorial of something like the unity of the Korean people that doesn't serve any kind of nationalistic purpose. They even shored up the. Uh... Yeah. What we can see here is actually kind of you know the well preserved, such a kind of you know um, historical reality that actually you know the try to talk about uh, what we should achieve you know with uh, this kind of you know the preserved you know, place. For instance, you know what they need to say that it's really kind of this one is. Uh, um, stand for kind of dreaming for the actual eternal future mm -hmm. and uh, it's it's not as kind of you know that um, the nationalistic you know the desire toward the, the reunification what i need is actually this place uh, created by historical moment but actually what they need is try to you know put this you know place forward kind of metaphysical dimension that means this is not belongs to any you know place in the actual reality what they need is kind of you know the um, territorial, you know, mm -hmm. um, the symbolic, you know, meaning. When we think about concepts, yeah. we talked about the concept. Concept, of the, yeah. The concept has no relation to an object in, exactly. in a historical sense. It has a relation mm -hmm. always to territory, as mm -hmm. uh, Deleuze thought. So as you talk about this, this, the concept of peace or the concept of what this represents as a memorial or a monument. Yeah. Right. A monument has no one meaning or clear definition, but it in a certain sense embodies uh, that sense of a relation to a, a fixed relation to a place. But here posed on the border of the North Korean border, which has been artificially imposed, that a, a ruin that usually is destroyed by time or by other forces is held up, shored up artificially in order to maintain it's the idea of it being a ruin. Uh, it's the relation of violence here is uh, always in a sense visible or made visible. It was a little bit very aesthetic, they will say. It's not empirical only. All things is together, gathered together. And that kind of very, you know, the uh, clumsy, you know, the plastic, you know, the mm -hmm. protector, but it seemed uh, all to get gathered together and it created, you know, new dimension. There's an incredible romanticism to the yeah. Korean soul in the sense of exactly. a, it's not even reunification, it's, it's a continued belief in the mm -hmm. unity of mm -hmm. the Korean people mm -hmm. that is perpetual. Mm -hmm. And that this conflict in a sense that separates mm -hmm. the people into two peoples mm -hmm. is uh, is temporary or artificial mm -hmm. uh, artificially imposed mm -hmm. well, this yeah. place I think is try to symbolize that kind of desire desire without object you know? yeah just a we desire we want something but uh, what is that there is no specific object just the one is we desiring eternal eternally desire eternally demanding. What is, I mean, why is, what, what is the eternal? Why is it, uh, it's such a strong image here of a ruin that is eternally here and then framed, yeah. uh, reinforced to remain. Mm -hmm. But to remain in the state of being a ruin. <laughs> you can't explain uh, purely as ideology. There's no way of saying that this represents a certain nationalistic sentiment mm -hmm. of the nationalistic South Korea after the conflict to memorialize mm -hmm. the ruin and to, to shore it up. The ruin of a, of a Communist Party headquarters. Usually a nationalist desire would be to destroy <laughs> and completely <laughs> annihilate the, exactly. any traces, any memory of that any of that structure so that there would be no there would be no memory of it. Well, I come back to what I said earlier that the utopia is the most powerful political concept that philosophy or critical theory has today mm -hmm. everything is placed in relation to utopia yeah. the uprisings in the Middle East mm -hmm. 
is an expression of utopia. This also is an expression of a, of a utopia. Yeah, it right, is right. the ruin. nowhere that is That's now right. here that we are standing in, this nowhere, um, is utopian too. Now, for instance, that, that kind of window, the ruined windows in the Stanford and Utopia, you know? Mm -hmm. Infinity go beyond, something like that. That means actually, this ruin is actually, you know, the world, the mundane, you know, mm -hmm. in which we live. But over there, look at the sky, throughout through this ruined window, you can mm -hmm. see that, it's a utopia, you know, mm -hmm. or some kind of infinity, something like that. So, that's why just this building, as such, might be you know, the, the something you know, the containing such a utopian desire, utopian impulse. So this is like the modern Parthenon. This is <laughs> right. this is Greece. The Korean. We talk about you know the emergence of democracy in Athens and Greece. Yeah, right. But I think the future of the political forms. Nothing will ever happen until this line is erased. Mm -hmm because it's the suspension of the frozenness of the Korean conflict that has been that has been fueled by ideologies between two great power superpowers that do no longer exist no so this is the the very conflict is untimely it no longer has a place in the present mm -hmm. it is so but i think that we're standing in the new greece exactly. i think that that is the sky yeah and this is the ruins mm -hmm. uh of the present that we're looking into the future mm -hmm. because in a sense until the line uh, along the parallel is erased mm -hmm. right. then we won't know what the future mm -hmm. political form will be mm -hmm. like so the concept has a relation to a territory mm -hmm. but I think that the concept of the future of the political form of peace has a concept to the has a relation to the Korean territory that is that belongs to the future, whereas Greece is past. 